Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the lecture 15 of the course on time series modeling and forecasting. In last couple of lectures, we discussed different uh, processes which can be used to model different time series. Uh, these processes include uh, moving average processes auto regressive processes and mixed ARMA processes. Now, for making proper inferences about these processes, we require certain conditions. We require the condition that these processes uh, are stationary and they also satisfy the condition of invertibility. These conditions are required so that the, these processes behave properly. Uh, in this lecture, we are going to discuss uh, the conditions for the stationarity and invertibility for these processes, uh, how you can check these conditions, uh, what are the implications if uh, these conditions are not satisfied, etcetera. Now, first uh, we can consider the stationarity of a process. Just for illustration purpose, we consider an AR1 process. So, your process is y t equal to phi 1 y t minus 1 plus u t. We are considering AR1 process. Now, we use successive substitution. So, then uh, you can write the process like this uh, y t equal to phi 1. You replace y t minus 1 by phi 1 y t minus 2 plus u t minus 1 plus u t. So, you get phi 1 square y t minus 2 plus phi 1 u t minus 1 plus u t or you can write u t first and phi 1 u t minus 1 that so you can write it as u t plus phi 1 u t minus 1. Again, we substitute y t minus 2 equal to phi 1 y t minus 3 plus u t minus 1. Then, you obtain phi 1 q y t minus 3 plus u t plus phi 1 u t minus 1 plus phi 1 square u t minus 2. And then you continue this process say all times. Then after all times uh, you get y t equal to phi 1 to the power r y t minus r plus u t plus phi 1 u t minus 1 plus phi 1 square u t minus 2 plus 1 plus phi 1 to the power r minus 1 u t minus r minus 1. Now, in this representation of the AR1 process, uh, suppose we take r tending to infinity. 
if you take r tending to infinity and if mod of phi 1 is less than 1, then see what happens. The process becomes u t plus phi 1 u t minus 1 plus phi 1 square u t minus 2 plus so on and the first term, this term goes to 0 as r tends to infinity because mod of phi 1 is less than 1. So, you can write y t in this form, which is actually a moving average process of infinite order. Now, what happens when mod of phi 1 is greater than or equal to 1? Then the first term phi 1 to the power r y t minus r keeps on increasing and as r tends to infinity, this term tends to infinity or you can say as r tends to infinity, the process explodes to infinity. Now, which is uh, not an appropriate situation, we just want to avoid this kind of situation. So, uh, you require this kind of condition uh, for the process to behave properly. So, for a proper behavior of the process, you must impose the condition that mod of phi 1 is less than 1. In general, suppose you have a general linear process, then for the general linear process to be stationary, the series theta b equal to summation j equal to 0 to infinity theta j b to the power j must converge for mod b less than or equal to 1 that is on or within the unit circle. Now, you actually your general linear process is y t is equal to summation j equal to 0 to infinity theta j u t minus j and then you can write it as capital theta b u t. And for this process to be stationary, this series theta b equal to summation j equal to 0 to infinity theta j b to the power j must converge on or within the unit circle. Uh, right now, I am not giving you the proof of this result because the proof of this result involves uh, a spectrum density function of the general linear process. Now, for the MAQ process, we already de derived the autocovariance function of the MAQ process and the autocovariance function is gamma k is equal to sigma square u theta k plus theta 1 theta k plus 1, so on plus theta q minus k theta q. Now, this uh, auto covariance function does not depend upon t, it is independent of t, it is a function of k only. So, it seems that, that the process is second order stationary means uh, looking at the auto covariance function, you can say that you do not require any condition on thetas uh, for the stationarity of the process. Uh, again, a process is stationary if it can be written as a moving average process of finite or infinite order with theta b equal to 0 in summation j equal to 0 to infinity theta j b to power j converges 
converging for mod b less than or equal to 1. Now, this is the condition which uh, I had given in the last theorem. For the moving average process, what is theta b? For m a q process, theta b is equal to summation j equal to 0 to q theta j b to the power j. And since uh, q is finite, you do not require any condition for the, the con convergence of this term on or within the unit circle. This your condition is that uh, the process is stationary, if you are able to write it as a moving average process of finite or infinite order with theta b equal to this converging for mod b less than or equal to 1. Now, moving average process is already of finite order. So, you do not require any stationary condition for the moving average process. Now, we briefly discuss the idea of invertibility with the help of an example. To illustrate the motivation behind invertibility, we consider the MA1 process y t equal to 1 minus theta b u t and u t follows normal 0 sigma square u. So, you have actually taken theta 1 equal to minus theta. Then you can write u t in terms of y t as u t equal to y t plus theta u t minus 1. Then recursively you can write y t as you have y t equal to u t minus theta u t minus 1, then you substitute u t equal to y t plus theta u t minus 1 or u t minus 1 is equal to y t minus 1 plus theta u t minus 2. So, you have u t minus theta So, what you get minus theta y t minus 1 minus theta square u t minus 2 minus theta u t minus 1 sorry. plus u t. And then we proceed further, we write u t minus 2 equal to y t minus 2 plus theta u t minus 3. And then we proceed say k times. So, ultimately what we obtain y t equal to minus theta y t minus 1 minus theta square y t minus 2 minus 1 minus theta to the power k y t minus k plus u t. 
and at last you have minus theta to the power k plus 1 u t minus k minus 1. Now, suppose you take k tending to infinity, then what happens? If mod of theta is less than 1, then as k tends to infinity, we obtain a r process of infinite order. And the process is y t equal to minus theta y t minus 1 minus theta square y t minus 2 and so on plus you have u t. And since mod of theta is less than 1, this term tends to 0 as k tends to infinity. So, you have written m a 1 process as a r process of infinite order and here phi j is equal to minus theta to the power j. Now, see what happens when mod of theta is greater than 1. One more thing you notice that as we proceed means uh, as we move from y t minus 1 to y t minus 2 or from y t minus 2 to y t minus 3, then the corresponding weights or corresponding coefficients keep on decreasing. But when mod of theta is greater than 1, y t depends upon y t minus 1, y t minus 2 with increasing weights. Means in determining the value of y t, the contribution of y t minus 2 is more than the contribution of y t minus 1. The contribution of y t minus 3 is more than the contributions of y t minus 1 and y t minus 2 and so on. So, we usually avoid this kind of situation and we assume that mod of theta is less than 1. And if uh, this condition is satisfied, then we say that the series is invertible if So, just uh, with the help of this example of m a 1 process, uh, uh, I have explained that uh, what, what problem you can face if you do not impose the condition of invertibility. Now, for further motivations, suppose you consider the m a 1 process y t equal to 1 minus 0 0.5 b u t. Now, for this process, so gamma 0 is equal to 1 plus 0 0.5 square equal to 1.25, gamma 1 is equal to minus 0 0.5, gamma b the auto covariance gen generating function is then equal to minus 0 0.5 b inverse plus 1.25 b to the power 0 minus 0 0.5 b. Now, we consider another process. So, z t equal to 1 minus 2 b v t. And v t follows normal 0, 0 0.25 then the auto covariance generating function of this process can also be easily obtained for this process gamma 0 is equal to 1 square plus 2 square 
and uh, then you have sigma square v here. So, ultimately you obtain 5 into 0 0.25 which is 1.25, gamma 1 is equal to you have minus 2 here, theta 1 is equal to minus 2. So, minus 2 into 0 0.25 again you get minus 0.5. Then the auto covariance generating function gamma star v is equal to minus 0.5 b inverse plus 1.25 b to the power 0 minus 0.5 b, which is same as the auto covariance generating function of the previous process, this one. So, both the processes have the same auto covariance generating function. Means, uh, you have the process z t equal to 1 minus 2 b v t, where v t follows normal 0 0.25 and here you have the process y t equal to 1 minus 0 0.5 b u t, u t follows normal 0 1. Both the processes have the same auto covariance generating function. So, on the basis of auto covariance function, you cannot distinguish between the two processes, or you can say on the basis of auto correlation function, you cannot distinguish between the two processes. Uh, we take one more example. Now, we consider these four MA2 processes. The first process is y t equal to 1 plus v minus v square u t. Second process is y t equal to 1 minus v minus v square u t. Third is y t equal to 1 minus theta v square u t, where theta is equal to 3 plus under root 5 upon 2. And uh, fourth process is y t 1 minus theta star v square u t, theta star is equal to 3 minus under root 5 upon 2. Uh, you can easily verify that uh, 1 plus theta square is equal to 3 times theta. Similarly, 1 plus theta star square is also equal to 3 times theta star. Now, we derive the autocorrelation functions for these processes and then we check whether these processes uh, can be discriminated or can be distinguished uh, on the basis of ACF or not. Uh, notice that uh, apparently it seems that all these four processes are different. Uh, for the first process, your auto covariance function is sigma square u, this is for the first process 1 plus b minus b square and 1 plus b inverse minus b square, uh, sorry b minus 2. And then uh, you simplify it and finally, you obtain gamma b equal to sigma square u minus b to the power minus 2 plus 3 minus b square. Then similarly for the second process to obtain the auto covariance generating function, you take 1 minus b minus b square multiplied by 1 minus b inverse minus b minus 2. Again, you can easily simplify it and then you can write it in this form, gamma b equal to sigma square u 
minus b mi to the power minus 2 plus 3 plus minus b square. For the third process, gamma b is equal to sigma square u and uh, inside you have 1 minus theta b square 1 minus theta b minus 2 and then you can easily simplify it and uh, actually you obtain theta you can take outside and inside you get uh, minus b minus 2 plus 3 minus b square. Similarly, you can obtain the autocovariance generating function for the fourth process also. Now, for the first process gamma 0 is equal to 3 sigma square u. For the second process gamma 0 is again 3 sigma square u. For the third process gamma 0 is equal to theta sigma square u and for the fourth process gamma 0 is equal to theta star sigma square u. Then you can easily obtain the autocorrelation functions for all the four processes. Say for example, for the third process rho 1 is equal to 0 because the coefficient of b is 0 and rho 2 is equal to minus theta sigma square u divided by gamma 0 means divided by theta sigma square u. Sorry, uh, 3 is also here. So, uh, rho 2 is equal to minus theta sigma square u upon 3 times theta sigma square u. Each of the processes have the same ACF. Rho, rho 1 is equal to 0, rho 2 is equal to minus 1 upon 3 and rho k is equal to 0 for all k greater than or equal to 3. So, these four processes are indistinguishable on the basis of ACF. Apparently, if you look at the four models, it seems that all, all the four processes are different, but on the basis of ACF, you cannot distinguish between these four processes. In fact, uh, only the fourth process is invertible. Uh, again, uh, the general linear process is invertible if the weight phi or theta g's are such that phi b equal to theta b inverse converges on or within the unit circle means converges for mod b less than or equal to 1. Now, the condition for the stationarity of an ARP process is 1 minus y 1 b minus y 2 b square. So, 1 minus y p b to the power p y t equal to 0. This is your process. Then uh, in this process phi, uh, you, you write phi b equal to this polynomial operator. Then uh, the transfer function for the ARP process is theta b equal to phi b inverse. Then for the stationarity of ARP process, roots of the equation phi b equal to 0 must be greater than 1 in magnitude. 
Now, this is the condition for the stationarity of ARP process. All roots of the equation phi v equal to 0 must be greater than 1 in magnitude. Now, we have already seen from this theorem that a general linear process is stationary if theta b must converge for mod b less than or equal to 1 on or within the unit circle. So, we use this result, we write theta b equal to phi b inverse. So, for the stationarity theta b equal to phi b inverse must converge for mod b less than or equal to 1. Now, suppose we denote the roots of this equation 1 minus phi 1 b minus phi 2 b squares so 1 minus phi p b to the power p equal to 0 by g 1 inverse g 2 inverse so on g p inverse. These are the roots of the equation 4. Then you can write uh, this polynomial of p degree as product i equal to 1 to p 1 minus g i b. Theta b is equal to product i equal to 1 to p 1 minus g i b inverse. We assume that all the roots are distinct. Then using partial fractions, you can easily write this product as summation i equal to 1 to p k i is some constant upon 1 minus g i p. So, for the convergence of theta b, this term 1 upon 1 minus g i b must converge for all i's and uh, uh, you need the condition that this theta b converges on or within the unit circle means for mod b less than or equal to 1. So, 1 upon 1 minus g i b must converge for mod b less than or equal to 1 for all i equal to 1 to p. And when is it going to converge? When mod of g i is less than 1 for all i. So, the condition for the stationarity is mod of g i is less than 1 for all i or roots of the equation are g 1 inverse g 2 inverse on g p inverse. So, this is equivalent to saying that mod of g i inverse is greater than 1 for all i. So, all roots of the equation must be greater than 1 in magnitude or mod g i inverse is greater than 1 for all i equal to 1 to p. Now, we consider the conditions for the stationarity of alma p q process. You have the process phi b y t is equal to theta b u t, where phi b is uh, a polynomial of degree p in b and theta b is a polynomial of degree q in b. Then uh, the process is stationary whenever roots of phi b equal to 0 lie outside the unit circle. So, you do not have to bother about theta b. 
just look at phi b and find out the roots of the equation phi b equal to 0. And if all roots are greater than 1 in magnitude, then you say that the process is stationary. So, we consider ARMA 1 1 process y t equal to phi y t minus 1 plus u t plus theta u t minus 1. So, root of 1 minus phi b equal to 0 is b equal to phi inverse. So, for the process to be stationary, you require the condition that mod of phi is less than 1. Means you require the condition that root is greater than 1, which is equivalent to root is phi inverse. Now, this is equivalent to saying that mod of phi is less than 1. Now, we come to the invertibility conditions. The process is invertible if it can be written as an auto regressive process of finite or infinite order. So, you do not require any conditions on auto regressive processes are always invertible. Now, we consider MAQ process with uh, and uh, we take mu equal to 0, the process mean is equal to 0. So, this is your process and then we write it equal to y t equal to theta b u t, where theta b is a finite polynomial means theta b is equal to 1 plus theta 1 b plus theta 2 b square, so 1 plus theta q b to the power q. So, obviously, you do not require any condition for the stationarity of the process, but you require conditions for the invertibility. For invertibility of MAQ process, roots of equation theta b equal to 0 must greater than 1 in magnitude. So, again suppose h 1 inverse, h 2 inverse, 1 so h q inverse are the roots of the equation 1 plus theta 1 b plus theta 2 b square plus 1 plus theta q b to the power q equal to 0. Then uh, you can write uh, this polynomial of degree q as the product i equal to 1 to q 1 minus h i b. h i inverse is the root of this equation. Then phi b is equal to you take inverse of theta b. So, obviously, phi b is equal to product i equal to 1 to q 1 minus h i b inverse. Again, we assume that all these roots are distinct and then you can write this product as using the partial fractions, you write this product as summation i equal to 1 to q h i upon 1 minus small h i b. So, for phi b to converge on or within the unit circle means for mod b less than or equal to 1, 1 upon 1 minus h i b must converge means mod of h i must be less than 1 for all i. Right. So, all the this is equivalent to saying that mod of h i inverse is greater than 1 for all i equal to 1 to q. 
So, this is the condition for the invertibility of the process. So, for the auto regressive processes, you do not require any condition for the invertibility, you require condition for the stationarity and the condition is phi b equal to 0, you look at the roots of the equation phi b equal to 0, then all roots of the equation must be greater than 1 in magnitude. For the moving average processes, you do not require any conditions for the stationarity, but for the uh, invertibility of the process, you take the equation theta b equal to 0, then you find the roots of this equation. And if all roots of the equation are greater than, greater than 1 in magnitude, then you say that the process is invertible. Then for the stationarity of Arma PQ process, all roots of the equation phi b equal to 0 are greater than 1 in magnitude. So, if you have Arma PQ, PQ process, then for the stationarity you do not have to bother about the theta b part, just look at phi b or you look at the roots of the equation phi b equal to 0. For the invertibility of Arma PQ process, we look at the roots of the equation theta b equal to 0 and for invertibility all roots must be greater than 1 in magnitude. You do not have to bother about phi b when you are looking at the invertibility of the process. Now, uh, just to illustrate how we can check the conditions for the stationarity and invertibility, we consider two examples. First, we take an auto regressive process of order 2 AR2 process and then you have to check the stationarity of this process. So, we check the roots of the equation. One minus point nine b plus point two b square equal to zero. Then you can write the left hand side of this equation as one minus point five b into one minus point four b equal to zero. So the roots of this equation are 1 upon 0.5 which is equal to 2 and 1 upon 0.4 which is equal to 5 by 2. So, both roots are greater than 1 in magnitude. So, the process is stationary. We consider one more example y t equal to minus 0 0.3 y t minus 1 plus 0.18 y t minus 2 plus u t minus 0 0.16 u t minus 2. So, this is an ALMA process, ALMA 2 for 
checking the stationarity of this process. You look at this equation 1 plus 0 0.3 b minus 0.18 b square equal to 0. So, we look at the roots of this equation for stationarity. Then you can write this equation as 1 minus 0.3 b into 1 plus 0.6 b equal to 0. So, ultimately you get two roots as 1 upon 0.3 means 10 upon 3 and b equal to minus 1 upon 0.6 means minus 10 upon 6 or minus 5 by 3. So, you can easily verify that both the roots are greater than 1 in magnitude. So, the process is stationary. For the invertibility of the process, you have to look at this part. So, the equation which you have to check is 1 minus 0.16 b square equal to 0. And uh, then roots you can write this equation as 1 plus 0 0.4 b 1 minus 0 0.4 b equal to 0. Then the roots are b equal to 1 upon 0.4 which is equal to 5 by 2 and minus 5 by 2. So, the two roots are 5 by 2 and minus 5 by 2. Again both the roots are greater than 1 in magnitude. So, the process is invertible also. So, this is the procedure for the checking the stationarity or the invertibility of the process. For checking the stationarity, you look at this part and for the invertibility, you look at this part. For the stationarity, we check the roots of the equation 1 plus 0 0.3 b minus 0.18 b square equal to 0 and for the invertibility, we check the roots of the equation 1 minus 0 0.16 b square equal to 0. So, this is how you can check the uh, stationarity or the invertibility of any ALMA process. So, in this lecture, we have discussed uh, the significance of uh, conditions of stationarity and invertibility of a process. We also uh, looked at the conditions which are required for the stationarity of AR or ARMA processes or the conditions for the invertibility of MA or ARMA processes. Uh, the condition of invertibility uh, is required for the moving average process, although the moving average processes are always stationary, but if the invertibility is not satisfied, then with the same auto correlation function, you can find more than one processes, different processes means uh, we had taken uh, an example in which uh, we had taken four different moving average processes and all the four processes had 
the same auto correlation function. So, if the condition of invertibility is not satisfied, then it may be not be possible for you or it may be difficult for you to distinguish between uh, those four processes on the basis of ACI. Uh, remember that uh, among all those four processes which I had taken in the example, only one process was invertible. So, if you impose the condition of invertibility, then your ACF uniquely determines or it uh, immediately picks up that particular process. Only that process satisfies the invertibility condition. Another problem, uh, if the condition of invertibility is not sat satisfied, then uh, we had taken the example of MA1 processes, how the past values of yt or the weightage of past values of yt's keep on increasing with lag means uh, yt minus 2 contributes more than yt minus 1 in determining the value of yt or y t minus 3 contributes more than y t minus 1 or y t minus 2 in determining the value of y t. Now, this is not an advisable situation. So, that is why we require the condition of invertibility also. Mm. For the auto regressive processes, the condition of stationarity is uh, essential. If uh, the condition of stationarity is not satisfied as we had seen in the case of random walk model, random walk model also looks like an AR1 process with uh, uh, phi equal to 1, but uh, it is not stationary. Then uh, you see that uh, the process has uh, mean which keeps on uh, varying with time or it has variance which keeps on increasing with time. So, it has several problems. So, that is why you require both the conditions stationarity and invertibility for your time series to satisfy. So, I am going to stop here. Thank you. I am uh, A.K. Sharma and I am professor of sociology at IIT Kanpur. The question I am going to address is uh, what is urbanization? Urbanization is essentially the process of population concentration, which means that if more people start living in a smaller number of places or if the distribution of population uh, becomes more unequal like more people living in places like Bombay, Calcutta, Mexico, uh, then we say that the urbanization is taking place. Essentially, it means increase in percentage of population living in areas or localities which are defined as urban. Urbanization is a new phenomenon, of course, a post-industrial phenomenon. About 200 years ago, hardly 5 percent population of the world lived in urban areas. 
and today more than 50 percent population of the world is living in urban areas or localities which are classified as urban. You will be happy to know that uh, according to 2011 census of India, in our own country for the first time increase in the urban population has been greater than the increase in the rural population. Though India is not so urban as the developed countries and about 31 percent population of India only is living in urban areas. We can believe that uh, in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years time, India will also be more urban, at least more urban than what it is. It may not be 80 percent, but certainly it will be 35 percent or 40 percent. Now, how is this uh, urban locality defined? Because this definition of locality as urban or rural is crucial to major level of urbanization. I will give you definition of our own country. In Indian census, an urban locality is defined in two ways. There are statutory towns and there are census towns. All places with municipality, municipal corporation, cantonment or notified town area committees are called urban. This is statutory definition. According to demographic definition, there are three main criteria. Uh, if a locality has more than 5000 people or 75 percent of male labor force is engaged in non-agricultural activities or the density of population is 400 per square kilometer or 1000 per square mile, then we say that the locality may be classified as urban. There are many other additions to this definition. Now, we have the concept of urban agglomeration and many other things, but essentially this is how urban population is defined in India. And as I said that urbanization is associated with economic development and industrialization, same is the case with India. Uh, about 100 years ago in India only 11 percent people were living in urban areas, today 31 percent are living in urban areas and uh, this is obviously linked with economic development of the country, growth of per capita income and industrialization. Uh, I remember that in one five year plan it was mentioned uh, uh, that uh, today you know, this urban population can grow by way of natural increase or births minus deaths in the urban areas itself or through rural to urban migration. Today, uh, nearly 60 percent contribution to growth of urban population is due to rural to urban migration and this is going to increase. This is essentially what urbanization means. Urbanization means growth of population in localities defined as urban in relation to population of localities defined as rural and uh, I have given you Indian definition. Thank you very much.